Ranger in Time, Escape from the Great Earthquake, a Scholastics book by Kate Mesner. Chapter 3. Shaking stairs and falling bricks. Ranger stepped carefully through the kitchen. Pots and pans and bricks littered the floor. Broken plates, bowls, and teacups spilled from the toppled cupboard. The girl wasn't here. Ranger had practiced finding people in the rubble of torn down buildings, but never one that was shaking all around him. He made his way through the mess of the staircase. Shards of shattered glass danced down the rattled, rattling stairs. Step by step, Ranger climbed until he reached the top. The trem trembling finally stopped, but a big piece of furniture blocked Ranger's way. He climbed up and on it with his front paws. There, the girl knelt in the middle of the hall. She was huddled over, crying into her gently cupped hands. Ranger barked. The girl looked up, her eyes wide with surprise. Oh! Ranger made his way over the fallen cupboard to her side. St st tears streaked down her cheeks. I left him here, she whispered, and held up her hands. A limp little goldfish, all covered in dust, rested in her palms. Gum Gum was all right after the first earthquake. I was so thankful for the good fortune, but then I left him. Ranger didn't understand what the girl was saying, but he understood sadness. Ranger remembered when Sadie's hermit crab had died last summer. The whole family had gone to the garden and buried it near the roses. Sadie had cried and cried. Ranger had stayed close to her, licking her hand once in a while to remind her he was there. Ranger sat down by the girl with the dusty fish. He nuzzled her shoulder with his nose. She laid the fish gently in the puddle on the floor and wrapped her arms around Ranger's neck. Something creaked and thudded above them. Plaster rained down from the ceiling. Ranger's skin prickled. The trembling might have stopped, but the house wasn't safe. Ranger barked. He nuzzled the girl until she stood up. Then he leaned against her and pushed her towards the stairs. She hesitated, looking back at the little fish. Ranger barked again, and she seemed to wake from her daze. She scrambled over the cupboard and started down the stairs with Ranger at her side. The house groaned and a huge timber crashed through the ceiling into the hallway behind them. A cloud of dust burst down the stairway. Lily stumbled down the last few steps and fell into her knees at the bottom of the stairs. Ranger nudged her to her feet. He felt her shaking hand on his collar and he led her through the kitchen and back outside. There you are, called an older woman in a long black, black dress. Thank the Lord you're safe. Lily nodded. Her insides were too churned up to let her speak. She stared at the tilted, battered building all up and down all up and down the hill. People streamed into the street. Some crawled out of their broken windows onto the sidewalk. Many were still barefoot and in night clothes. There they are, climbing over the cupboard. Others had put on all their best outfits in layers. From their Sunday shoes to their Easter hat, cats raced like shadows into the alleys. Dogs crouched low with their tails drawn in and scooted under. Over the ground in panic, the whole city swarmed like an anthill someone had stirred up with a stick. A parade of, a parade of drizzled neighbors had already started up the hill. Families filled the street carrying bundles of clothes and food over their shoulders. Some trudged along with heavy baskets. Others pulled trucks with thick ropes over the cobblestones. 
you must stay to you must stay together as we walk to the church lomo said as she lined the girls up lily found the bundle of clothes and food she dropped in the street when she ran back inside she looked up at the house poor gum gum she hadn't even been able to give him a proper goodbye come now lomo said quickly quickly lily picked up the bundle and fell into line ranger stayed at her side and they began the long march up sacramento sacramento street hill the girls walked quietly lugging their few things they had time to grab some of the younger girls cried hush now lily whispered as they walked but with each step the lump in her throat grew bigger she tried to be brave and and cheerful for the little ones it will be all right you'll see lily looked down at the shaggy dog trotting beside her it hadn't left her side since it found her in the crumbling hallway upstairs maybe the golden dog was gum gum's spirit looking after her now or maybe it was just a neighborhood stray scared like all the rest and what was the strange box it wore around its neck Lily squinted at the faded lettering on the metal. It was a first aid kit. Someone must have given it to the dog to carry as they fled. Lily looked around, but she couldn't see an owner. Wherever the dog had come from, Lily was thankful, and the feeling of its warm, solid body under her trembling hand was the only thing that kept her moving through the torn up streets.